Good morning, dear student friends. I'm Dr. Godbol and Mahendra Tukaram. Welcoming you all on my YouTube channel. I am also welcoming you all in my today's sequel of super lecture on paleontology. Basically, in the invertebrate paleontology. What will be the scheme of today's presentation? that i will be i am going to explaining here what will be the scheme of today's lecture the today's talk is not only connected to the invertebrate paleontology we are also going to talking about the principles of the stratigraphy and paleontology principles of stratigraphy and paleontology and two sub phylum of phylum i am going to discussing in the same lecture that is uh, mollusks mollusks and bivalves bivalve it is it is supposed to be mollusks previously it was known as a lamellibranchiates and coelopoda and the second phylum i am going to discussing about the cephalopods its geological distribution in connection with the geological time scale morphological features and various kinds of uh, the adaptations as well as evolution coming to the part of uh, the stratigraphic units what is the contribution of uh, nicolo sesteno and other geologist or the workers in the stratigraphic units that also i will explain what is the stratigraphic unit strata do not have labels on them which immediately tell us that they were deposited in a particular epoch or period but they do have contain certain information that allows us to establish an order or the formation of the units and for us to work out where they fit into the correlation schemes there are the number of the different approaches that can be used each based on the different epochs rocks each of which is on some values which may have some values individually but are most profitably used in the combinations there are certain kinds of the stratigraphic units for example the allo stratigraphic units finally the rock bodies can use a sequence of the stratigraphy and which can also explain about the hierarchical framework of the boundings of the different strata for example what happens at the time of the pleistocene period at the time of the glacial lithophysis and how the glacial lithophysis can be distinguished from the rest of the bodies or the rest of the strata that can be also identified in the different fields the next unit is the chronostratigraphy that chronostratigraphy is connected to the boundaries of the different rocks and it is a isochronous which is a third units where there are the large number of the rocks can directly or indirectly be determined on the basis of the chronostratigraphic units the chronostratigraphic unit can be defined as a chronostratigraphic units have upper and lower boundaries and that are each isochronous surfaces and which may have a various kinds of the combinations of the different kinds of the fossils those may have a different kinds of the geological epochs and the ranges for example in the geochronological scales we may have in cambrian ordovician silurian dehonian and all kinds of the invertebrate uh, fossils records the strata do not have labels as i already told you but we may correlate on the basis of uh, the availability of the fossils even certain type certain kinds of the fossils may also explain the correlation at the time of uh, the tectonism for example the australia and the europe may have a abundance of the different kinds of the trilobite fossils and this is known as the biostratigraphic units in the biostratigraphic units 
uh, we may distinguish uh, it is based on the lithological characteristics the stratigraphic positions relative to the or the bodies of the rocks these are the lithostratigraphic units and they can uh, readily be defined as a layered sedimentary rocks secondly a body of the rock can be defined and characterized by its fossil content and this would be a biostratigraphic units in the australia we may have different kinds of uh, the trilobites at the upper layer and we may have various kinds of the bivalves in the lower layers and it is common in the europe also the next unit of the stratigraphy is a magnetostratigraphy which is also connected to the uh, drifting uh, theory and uh, the divergent boundaries we may have a younger sedimentation by means of the continuous magmatic activities and the fourth type of the stratigraphic unit is a magnetostratigraphic units as a body of the rocks which exhibits a magnetic properties that are the different to the adjacent bodies of the rocks in the stratigraphic succession here we have we have a different kinds of the uh, convergent and the divergent plate boundaries along the divergent plate boundaries we may have a different kinds of the lithological units which may contains the mag magnetic properties the next unit is a lithostratigraphy that lithostratigraphic uh, units which is considered in terms of the lithological characteristics of the strata and their relative stratigraphic position the relative stratigraphic positions of the rocks units can be determined by the considering the geometric and the physical relationships that indicates which beds are the older and which beds are the younger here we may have a various kinds of the uh, uh, determination of uh, the stratas and the layers of the different uh, rocks has been overlain one another here m1 is uh, overlain on the the m2 is overlain on the m1 and uh, the m m3 is overlain on the m2 strata which may have various kinds of the formations for example in case of uh, the lowest bed or the lowest formation the sandstones and the prehistoric is situated and uh, the sandstones which are also overlain on the foundation rocks and the limestones are located at the topmost region the units can be classified into the hierarchical systems of the members and formations and the groups provides a basic uh, unit for the categorizing the describing the rocks and the little stratigraphic terms the next point is a litho stratigraphic relationships or the stratigraphic relationship in these stratigraphic relationships we may discuss about the superposition how the superposition can be considered in these superposition provided that the rocks are the light way up and see above higher the stratigraphic sequences of the uh, epochs will be considered this is this rule can be simply applied to the leo and the kek stratigraphy and must be explained in the one rock is deposited on the another rock in these superposition we may talk about the law of the superposition uh, law of the cross cutting relationships and the law of original horizontality in case of the law of ori original horizontality there will be no displacement at all but in case of uh, the other orientations and the alterings we may have a cross cutting beds and in case of the law of the lateral continuity the beds may also have the same sequence of the deposition we are going to talk about the nicolo sesteno and who was the founder of the modern geology and he has laid the certain kinds of the principles and those of principles are the major principles in the stratigraphy relating that within the sequence of the layers of the sedimentary rocks the older layer is at the base and that the layers can progressively found in ascending orders of the sequence the law of the superposition was formulated by the danish geologist nicolas stenos and outlined in his book that is the 
salido intra natural lighter and he has discussed the different kinds of the process of the uh, nature and uh, the greater general principles of the geology now coming to the study of the invertebrate paleontology the first phyla will be discussed the bivalves the bivalves are belonging from the mollusks mollusks family the mollusks are supposed to be a primitive living organisms those were came on the planet of the earth before the gastropods and the cephal gastropods and the cephalopods the next order is a cephalopoda and the cephalopods the cephalopods are supposed to be the ancestors of the cephalids including the most modern cephalopods and the ancestors of the modern nautilus diverged from the florian age of the early ordovician period or 470 million years ago the next order is a trilobites and the trilobites may have a three kinds of the segments the first one is the shield and it is a head region and the body has been divided into div in different uh, sections this is the divergence of the trilobites the next epoch is uh, the echinoids so this is i am just giving a brief uh, information about uh, uh, the various kinds of uh, the issues which i am going to raise in my entire presentation the next phyla is an echinoderms or the echinoid fossils so morphologically the skeleton of the morphology is uh, you know that uh, the body is uh, irregular and there are two classes one is a regularia and another one is a irregularia there are certain kinds of the unconformities uh, uh, can be discussed in the same presentation that unconformity is the base of the grand canon successions and the dark rocks of the bottoms and the grooves and the archaean cysts are overlain by the younger protozoic and the phanerozoic sediments the non unconformity or the non conformity in the world river that is a wind river gorge and wyoming the what is unconformity the unconformities are the record of the major episodes of the uplift erosions and the subsidence during the growth of the continents as a earth's history possessed and they are the therefore important evidences for the crustal mobility and uh, uh, throughout the earth history the unconformities can give the records of the major episodes of the uplifting erosion sub subsidence during the growth and uh, growth of the continents and the earth history of the progressed the next point of the presentation will be the micro fossils what are the micro fossils that uh, those are the extreme micro fossils can be uh, detected by the uh, different kinds of uh, the uh, same and uh, the higher magnification is uh, needed the size of the microns the, the size of the micro fossils in the micron point or the 0.001 mm and the one have a dimensions lower than the 0.05 meter or the 50 uh, micrometers are classed also in the the nano fossil groups then the next micro fossil is a conodonts the conodonts are the tooth like micro fossils known from the cambrian to away to a very end of the triassic though their classifications was long in, and then limbo and the knowledge about their soft tissues remains and limited they are believed to be an elements of the 
extinct jawless and the chordates that resembled the eels and conodonts are the important uh, index fossil the next index fossil or the next uh, micro fossil is a scolodonts the scolecodonts are the jaws of the uh, polychaetid animal annelids or the segmented uh, bristle worms the fossils may be recorded from the ordovician silurian devonian and the marine environment and the vast majority of the species are the marines and though the scolecodonts are generally tiny one of the largest scolecodonts uh, ever found in the webster preen and the other devonian canada the next uh, micro fossil is a foraminifera the foraminifera are the external shell or the test or the single celled protist that is organisms that are the classified as a neither animal plant or the fungus the most foraminifera are the marine and the majority of these species live on within the sea floor sediments the forms and the shapes they are among the most diverse of the microscopic uh, creatures as a fossil they are valued as a indicators of the paleo climate and as an index fossil colocolites uh, the next one is a cocolites the cocolites are the individual plates or the or the scales of the calcium carbonates formed by the Uh, cocolithospores uh, single celled phytoplankton such as a uh, emilian or hexili and over all cell surfaces arranged in the forms of the uh, that is in spherical cells called as a cocospheres this is an helixi or an example of the cocospheres and the uh, cocolithospores are the spheroidal in cells and uh, about 5 to 100 micrometers across uh, and uh, it may have the uh, 2 to 15 micrometers across the cocolithospores are an important groups of about the 200 marine phytoplankton species which covers themselves with a calcium carbonate shells called as a cocospheres the cocolites are economically ecologically those are in bio geochemically important but uh, reason why they why the calcify remains elusive cocolithospores have been an an integral part of the marine and the plankton community since the jurassic period the thomas huxley has explained about the cocolites the calcareous dinoflagellate cyst is another micro fossil sand which is also made up of by the calcareous dinoflagellate cysts or the calcareous dinocysts are the dinoflagellate cysts and produced by the group of the peridionoids and the dinoflagellates called as in calcareous dinoflagellates organisms producing the calcareous structures are in exclusively found in the small group of the peridinoid and the dinoflagellates called as a calcareous dinoflagellates and those were uh, remained in the cretaceous and uh, throughout the tertiary period the ostracods are the another micro fossils and the ostracods and the ostracods are in class of the crustaceans class or the uh, class ostracoda sometimes known as in seed uh, shrimp and some 70000 species only 13000 of which are in extant and have been identified and grouped into in several orders they are the small crustaceans and typically round in 1 mm or the 0.039 inch in size but varying from in 0.2 to 30 mm that is 0.008 to 1.181 in the case of the gynocysts 
the diatoms are also the macro fossils or the nano fossils the diatoms are the new latin or the diatoma is a any member of the large groups uh, which may have a 20 to 50 percent of the oxygen and the living diatoms makes the significant portions of the earth's biomass that generates about the 20 to 50 percent of the oxygen produced out on the planet's each year and take in over the 6.7 billion metric tons of silicon each year from the water a water in which they live and constitutes nearly a half of the organic materials found in the ocean the sale of the dead diatoms can reach as much as in half miles of 800 meter deep on the ocean floors and the entire amazon basin is in fertilized annually by the 27 million tons of the diatoms the sales and transported by the winds from the african saharan regions the diatoms are unicellular organisms they occur either as in solitary cells or in the colonies and which can take the shapes of the ribbons and fans and uh, zigzags or the stars and the individual cells ranges in the size from the 2 to 200 micrometers in the presence of the adequate uh, nutrients and the sunlight an assemblage of the living diatoms uh, dawkles in approximately over in 20 hours by an asexual multiple fissions and the maximum life span of the individual cells is about the 6 days the next microfossil is the next point of uh, the paleontology is the palynology that the palynology is in science of the fossil this these are the fossils and the palynology is connected to the science of the fossil science of the fossils and the modern pollen spores and algal cysts and all the microscopic plant bodies it is a multidisciplinary fields with applications in the forensic science geology geography botany entomology zoology archaeology immunology and environmental sciences there are n number of the application of the palynology the term palynology is derived from the greek terms that is a palyo no meanings the strew or in a sprinkles and suggestions of the pale meanings in fine meal or the latin pollen meaning also a fine flow of the dust these are the algal cysts of identified from the gypsum sample these are the gypsum gypsum samples and those are collected from the depositions of the gypsum from uh, the the peter and the bejor has uh, collected all those samples again the palynology is in past climates can be preserved in the pollens the pollen will be very useful for the preservation and the identifications of the previous or the ancient environment plants releases the large amounts of the pollens and these little grains are in incredibly tough and hardy it is difficult to destroy the pollen grains they are not easily crusted they are, they cannot be destroyed even by in rocks and they don't often dissolve because there is a lot of the pollens and it doesn't falls apart easily it is in often preserves in the layers of the sediments and can become in fossilized within the rocks even in the places where the plants and the animals are not likely to be preserved as a fossil this makes and pollens a good source for the data about the past climate so the palynology may have various kinds of the collections of the pollens and the analysis of the pollens uh, is an extremely useful tool for the understandings of the characters of the ancient vegetation in response of the changes in the environmental conditions particularly in the climate in this sense the palynology will have a very significant role in the understanding and the study of the conditions what type of the conditions and what kinds of the climatic situation were there in the past 
of the earth. The Poland analysis also has an economically important modern industrial use in the exploration for the resource of the fossil fuel. Therefore, that the paleontology played a very important role in the hydrocarbon exploration and so on. Paleontology is also used in the reconstruct the probable habitats of the foods of the ancient humans and the wild animals. Coming to the next uh, part of uh, the presentation, that is uh, the invertebrate paleontology. We are going to move him towards the invertebrate paleontology, the, the portion of uh, the microfossils and the certain kinds of the principles of stratigraphy has been over. Now we are looking towards the mollusks. The mollusks are the people think that the mollusks as a very slow living creatures uh, and those are the snails and the animals that may hardly move at all like the like the muscles and this is the the muscles and this is only the part of the pictures the oceans of the world were once dominated by the schools of the predatory mollusks called as the omniotes and with the sharp beaks and surprising uh, turn of the speeds those kinds of the mollusks died out at the same time as the dinosaurs but in the present day, that is the squids and the octopus are in formidable ocean hunters. Today's octopus and the squids are the formidable ocean hunters. Within a intelligence that the outshines any fish. This talk will explore all types of the mollusks from the humble slugs to a compelling the giant Pacific octopus. So I'm going to explaining the all background information about the mollusks from a small sluggish to the very highly evolved octopus. The mollusks is in second large phylum of the invertebrate animals after the arthropods and arthropods are supposed to be the largest animal kingdoms. The members which are known of the mollusks are the mollusks. Around 85,000 extant species of the mollusks are recognized the number of the fossil species are estimated over the 60,000 to 1 lakh additional species the proportions of the undescribed species is in very high the many texts are remains in poorly studied the good evidences exists for the appearances of the gastropods or the other other mollusks from the Cambrian period about the 500 million years ago. Though arguably each of these may belongs to only the same lineages of the respective classes. However, the evolutionary history of both of these emergence of the mollusks from the ancestral groups that is a uh, Lofotrozoa and their diversifications into the well-known living and fossil forms and it is in still vigorously debatable. Now again we are going to discussing about the morphological features and the general information about the bivalves are in previous centuries and referred to as a lamellae branchiates and the coelopods, lamellae branchiates and the coelopods. The class of the marine and the freshwater mollusks that have already encompassed and bodies and enclosed of the cells consisting of the two hinged parts. As a group, the bivalves have no head and they lack some of the usual mollusks organs like the radiola and the odontopores. They including the clams and oysters and the cockle and the cockles and the mussels, scolops and the numerous other families of the lie in the salt waters as well as the number of the families that lie in the fresh water. The majority are the filter feeders. The gills have evolved into a nidia and the specialized organs of the feedings and that the those are known as in filter feeders.
coming to the digestive systems the large gills filters foods from and waters and the direct into the labial and then pulps the bivalves have an ability to select the food filtered from the water and this is supposed to be the filter feeders the stomach is then completely surrounded by the digestive or the diverticulums that is in glands and the dark mass of the tissues that is in frequently called as a liver morphologically the diver the, the, that is the digestive system is in simples and then uh, mycoprotein can be uh, mycoprotein can be uh, released and that enzymes uh, convert into the starch into in digestive sugar coming to the part of the circulatory systems that bivalves have in simple circulatory systems which is in rather the difficult to trace the heart lies in the transparent sac and the pericardium close to the adductor muscles into the uh, monomyrian species consisting of the two irregular shaped auricles and the ventricles anterior and the posterior parts need from the ventricles and then carry the bloods to in all parts of the body the venous system is in a, a huge series of the thin walled and the sinuses through which the bloods returns us to the heart this is a simple hertz of the mollusks and this is a nervous systems the nervous system is then difficult to observe without any specialized operation that the specialized operations can be needed for any cell consisting of the pairs of the as a uh, ganglia and connectors to the other parts of the brains the sexes of the bivalves can be separate and those are supposed to be the dioecious dioecious means the sexes are the separate male and the female and sometimes those species may also have in hermaphroditic means the monoecious or the sexes are not separated the sexes may be uh, situated say, in the same the both the sexes male and the female can be uh, seen in a common characters common specimen the gonad may be a conspicuous well defined organ as in scallops and occupies the major portions of the visceral mass as in clams in some species such as scallops and in sexes can be radially distinguished by in eyes with the gonads is in full and since in male and the gonad white uh, and in colors and the females is in red over in hermaphroditic species the colors may be uh, different coming to the a uh, distribution of the bivalves in the geological time scales so you know that bivalves have been inhibited from the earth over in 500 million years particularly from a cambrian about 300 million years from cambrian to over a cambrian period they flourished in the mesozoic and the cenozoic eras also and they abound the modern seas and the oceans their shell is in little beaches and across the globes so this is a geological time scale and from in uh, paleozoic and mesozoic and the cenozoic uh, from the paleozoic to cenozoic means the recent we may have the abundance and the distribution of the bivalves this is a geological time scale which is an indicating that the proportion of the bivalves and the brachiopods the proportion of the bacopods is in much less as compared to the bivalves the next class of uh, the invertebrate is a gastropods gastropods are the gastropoda while talking about the gastropods those are also belonging from the mollusk and those are the common we may see the history or the geological change or the modification from the mollusks to the gastropods there will be gradual change or they, there may be a sudden change because the certain phylums of the bivalves can't uh, can't climb on the top parts of the regions of the trees but those uh, gastropods can do the gastropods commonly known as in snails and the slugs belonging to be large taxonomic class of the invertebrate thin phylums mollusks or the called gastropods this class comprises the snails and the slugs from the salt water and the fresh waters and from inland there are the many thousands of the species of the species of snails and the slugs 
as well as the fresh water so snails and the fresh water so limpets and the land snails and the slugs the class gastropods contains a vast total named the species and second only after the insects so over a number the fossil history of the class goes back to the late cambrian period means the existence of the gastropods we may trace from the late cambrian period as for the 2017 uh, 721 families of the gastropods are the known over 245s are extinct and apio only the fossils records while 476 are currently extant with the without the fossil records so these are the uh, cladogram of the gastropods uh, we may have the various kinds of uh, the uh, orders in the gastropods generally the gastropods may have the two kinds of the uh, body one is a dextral and another is, is a synextral on the basis of the presence of the whirling systems one is a clockwise and another one is a anti clockwise this is a synextral and this is a dextral the gastropods previously known as in univalves and sometimes spelled as a gastropoda are in major parts of the phylum mollusks and in mostly highly diversified class this is a diversified class and it is in phylums of the 65000 to 80000 living snails and slug species the anatomy behavior feeding and the reproductive adaptations of the gastropods vary significantly from in one clade or the groups to the others and uh, stating so many general generalities from all the gastropods is in difficult the class gastropoda has an extraordinary diversifications of the habitats representative lives in the in the gardens in woodlands and deserts and on the mountains and small ditches in the great rivers and the lakes in the estuaries and the uh, mud flats and the rocky intertidals the sandy and the subtidals the abyssal and the depths of the oceans including the hydrothermal vents and the numerous other ecological niches including the parasitic ones so these are the scientific literature shows that the gastropods were described as in gastropods by the george cuvier in the 90 in the 1795 in 1795 the terminology gastropod was terminology was coined by the cuvier or the george cuvier in the greek that is in stomach and the uh, foot means a reference of uh, the fact that the animal's foot is a uh, postulated to be a guts although the name the snails can be often is in applied to all the members of the class and commonly this the words means the only the species of the external cells and the big enough and that the soft parts are without and completely into it the gastropods without a shell and those with only a very reduced or the internal shell are usually known as a slugs without shell and reduced the shell is known as a slugs those with the shells into which they can uh, partly but not completely withdraw the term is uh, the term is a semi slugs the marine shelled species of the gastropods including the species such as the abalone and the conclures and the other whales and the numerous other sea snails that produces the sea shells that are coiled in the adult stages the basic difference is given the without shells the without shelled animals is known as a slug so these are the conch whelk abalone or the marine snail this is a marine snail here the uh, body is not uh, having a tough uh, uh, snail body is not uh, preserved by the calcium carbonate there was a news in the uk in the 2016 in the may 2016 a 
why we are importing the whelks and the whelks are the healthy and versatile suitable so why did we import it to the outside the uk or to the east this kinds of the news were there means the gastropods are supposed to be the rich source of the proteins morphologically the last whorl is a bigger the last whorl is also known as a body whorl where the animal can be housed most of, in case of the most of the snails in this last parts of the cell there is a aperture which has some characteristics the outer edge of the aperture is known as a peristome while the inner lip has a smooth and the callus called as in uh, inductura the internally it's impossible to observe the junctions of the inner walls and joining so it produces and fused structures along with the axis and shell known as the calomela this is the calomela and this is in whorl and this is in last word those are known as in body whorl or the body chamber where the animal can house in some gastropods the lights contain the the tight coilings in the inner parts of the whorl and fuses with the vertical axis of the coilings forming in central solid pillar like structures and which is termed as in columella this is in columella the the rigid structure or the pillar like structures can uh, be a, a, the basement or the foundation for the uh, coiling of the other board other walls including the body walls whatever in some of the other forms the inner parts of the world do not uh, uh, do not uh, coalesce to form solid columella again the morphologically this is the one type of the shell this is in sinistral this is a sinistral and this is the uh, dextral in case of the sinistral the body of the whorls is the directions of the whorl is in anti clockwise and here it will be a clockwise this is a clockwise and anti clockwise anti clockwise direction as you know that uh, how most of the cells are the coiled and this is in coiling can be neither the the dextral be either dextral or the sinistral known whether the cell is in sinistral or the dextral it is an important to orient the cells into such a way that its axis faces the upwards and the and the apertures is in visible to you this is a sinistral and this is a dextral the outline of the apertures may be in simple circular oval ellipticals and in crescentic or the slit like the main the margins of the apertures is known from the peristomes this is the uh, transverse sections of the shell of the gastropods where the outer lip is curved inwards termed as in inflected when it is in curved curved outwards again this is in the siphon is in soft in habitat is in inhalant tubes that takes the waters into the mantles and cavity when the animals is in active the peristomes is in siphons or in no, or the notches is known as in the uh, siphonostomatus and those without the notches are described as in holostomatus on the presence of the again the turnings towards the top of the cells the shape of this apex of the cell is determined by the spiral and the angles this is in spire and in this on this basis the high spired cells or the uh, low spired cell can be identical the apex is in first formed parts of so therefore the represents uh, the oldest parts of the cell this is the the apex is an oldest part and this is a youngest part
you may have uh, you might have been learned the cells of the gastropods take beads and spirally coiled structures which is in which is in broadly of the two types as a cone spirals and the plane spiral cone spiral cells are the coils along an erect cone and the plane spiral cells are those in which the coiling is in arranged in the symmetrically in the single plane some of the common forms are the discoidal and conical and fusi forms and even a, a in a, a non volume or in convolute in the discoidal cells those are the different kinds of the forms this is the cone spiral this is a plane spiral discoidal and so on and we may have the last two kinds of the uh, convolute structure of the cell this is a plane spiral geological range of the gastropods so what what is what the history can what history told us of the gastropods the geological range of the gastropods is from in cambrian to the recent from cambrian to recent among is from 500 million years ago and the first gastropods appeared as in the early cambrian and these have in simple low and the cup shaped cells as we move towards the ordovician and the colonized the sea and the fresh waters and the land during the carboniferous period there was a certain kinds of the changes were taken place and the species was living in the in the colonies the oldest known that is a, a uh pulmonate gastropods have been reported from the late carboniferous during the paleozoic and the uh, holostomatous gastropods belonging to the subclass of the uh, prosobranchiata were the dominant it is an equally important to note that the gastropods suffered from the diversity loss during the paleozoic particularly in the late ordovician late devonian and the permian period again the geological history of the the uh, gastropod shows from a mesozoic gastropods underwent the second phase of the diversifications and resultant of the saxonostomatous forms in appears in the triassic and becomes an abundant in the late jurassic mesozoic and land forms diversified and dramatically during the jurassic and the late cretaceous periods whereas the marine forms diversified during the mid cretaceous cenozoic witnessed the last phase of the gastropod diversifications and a lot of diversifications may be presented in the gastropods as in widely distributed all over the globe during the mesozoic times the gastropods witnessed a minor losses in the diversity the cenozoic era is known for the highest distributions of the gastropods this is the uh, as we move from the cambrian to the tertiary and to the present day the, the diversification of the gastropods shows uh, as a increasing in trend this is a uh, this is a funnel type of the presentation or the distribution so right from the cambrian means the uh, less than 500 and uh, five, uh, less than uh, 500 million to the present day now the next uh, uh, invertebrate class of uh, uh, the uh, study is known as in cephalopods the study of the cephalopods are known as a teuthology this is a teuthology and the study of the bivalves is known as in malacology this teuthology and the malacology we are going to studying the cephalopod is in very tiny members of the mollusks class of the cephalopods the greek the plural that is the that is in head fit such as in squid octopus and the cuttlefish or the nautilus those are the examples of the cephalopods those are the exclusively or exclusively marine animals and characterized by the bilateral body symmetry and prominent head this is the the head is very prominent and presence of the various kinds of the tentacles these are those are the tentacles tentacles can be used for the capturing of the food and so on the tentacles are the muscular are the hydrosto hydrostates and modified from the primitive mollusks as a foods fishes sometimes can be cephalopods that is an ink fish that cephalopods sometimes referred as a ink fish referring to their common ability to 
tweets the link the ink and the studies of the cephalopods is a branch of the malacology is known as in tuthology so these are the various kinds of uh, the species from the uh, uh, class of cephalopods and those are supposed to be the uh, uh, cuttle fish and the nautilus and the octopus and the uh, and this is also a, one of the most important uh, Uh, Sepioidea and uh, uh, Caribbean reef squid. There are various kinds of the uh, changes may be seen in these cephalopods. This is the part of uh, the gastropods, and these are the different kinds of the terminologies uh, of the cephalopods the cepha that is the cephalopods can be used the chromo chromatophores like the muscles which is in very widely used for the colorations which can be controlled by some parts of the brains and that controls the elongations during the jet propulsion and reducing the drags cephalopods are at highly diversified and known for the ink uh, squid and uh, for giving the uh, for, for for confusing the predators and so on this is in coloration or the chromatospores can be used for uh, uh, the changing the color that evidences of the original colorations has been detected in the cephalopod uh, fossils from in silurians and the orthogonic characters when devonian cephalopods we have more complex color patterns and the unknown function the ink is also the most important and the typical characteristic features of the nautiloidy and the species of the octopus belonging from the suborder of the uh, sirena and the all known cephalopods have an ink sac and ink sac is a very important uh, which is in cloud or the dark ink it can confuse the predators so this is a one of the most important uh, uh, strategy has been developed by the cephalopods uh, to confuse the predators uh, and it is also a part of the uh, deterrence of the enemy and this sac is in muscular bags which originated as an extension of the hind gut it lies beneath the gut and opens into the anus into which uh, its uh, contents almost uh, the pure uh, uh, melanin can be squirted its uh, proximity is to base for the uh, funnel means uh, ink can be distributed by ejected the waters uh, by the cephalopods is its a uh, jet propulsion the budget propulsion technology can be used by the cephalopods for the squirting the ink for the confusing and deterrence against the uh, uh, its predator cephalopods only a mollusks which is in the uh, closed circulatory systems and uh, the colorless uh, the what is the basic difference of the cephalopods and other living uh, living creatures the cephalopods do not have the blood with the hemoglobin the most of the mollusk cephalopods use the hemocyanin in case of the hemocyanin instead of the iron that the hemocyanin may contain the copper or the copper containing the protein rather than the hemoglobin and hence the animal may be uh, may look as a so active and to transport the oxygen the result of the blood is in colorless and the density of the blood of the, the density of the blood of uh, the cephalopod as a hemocyanin is less dense as compared to the hemoglobin and the oxygen rich environment and its uh, the acidic water hemoglobin is a more efficient but in the environment with the little oxygen and in the lower temperature the hemocyanin has an uh, upper hand therefore the cephalopods having always upper hands by means of the presence of the hemocyanin the hemocyanin molecules is a much larger than the hemoglobin molecules allowing it to bonds with the 96 oxygens or the carbon dioxide molecules but unlike the hemoglobins which are the attached into the millions of the surface of the single red blood cells and the hemocyanin molecules Uh, floats freely on the blood stream 
Coming to the part of the respiration, the cephalopods exchange the gases with the sea water by the forcing the waters through their gills and which are attached to the roof of the organism. Water enters the mantle cavity on the outsides of the gills and entrance of the mantle cavity close. When the mantle contracts, water is forced through the gills and which lies between the mantle cavity and the funnel. The respiration used by the circulatory systems, jet propulsions, large losses in the speeds and the oxygen generations can be expected. So this is the approaches of uh, the uh, fraud efficiency. In case of the jet propulsions, the energy will be much, uh, much, much energy will be consumed as compared to the uh, simple swimming. Well, coming to the part of the cephalopods evolutions, the traditional view of the cephalopods evolutions holds that the evolutionary uh, they were evolved in the late Cambrian period and the monoplacophoran like the ancestors with the curved and tapering cells and which has been closely related to the gastropods of males. This is a, 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 a historical development of uh, the shell of the cephalopods. And similarly, the early shells of the cephalopods is in placotorus, uh, uh, and some of the gastropods has used the supports of this view, development of the uh, siphunals, and would have allowed the cells of these early forms becomes a gas field, thus which may have a higher buoyancy in order to support them and keeps the cells upright to the animals and the crowd along the uh, floor. Again coming to the uh, history of uh, the evolution of the cephalopods, the ancestors of the siloid including the most modern cephalopods and the ancestors of the modern nautilidae are diverged, diverged from the uh, Floian age of the early Ordovician period of the 470 million years ago and the other cephalopods uh, might have evolved from in lower, uh, middle and upper Cambrian period. So this is the uh, classification of the cephalopods and this is a phylogeny of the cephalopods. Here may have a wide variation of the cephalopods, uh, how the uh, cell and the jet propulsion systems has been developed the mineralized texture of the uh, blood, the attachments of the clades including the sepia and the uh, spirula is uh, unclear, other the points marked with in a uh, uh, represents the uh, roots of this clade. So as we move towards the present age or the Cenozoic era, the complexity of the cephalopods is goes on increasing. So this was all about the classification of the two classes or the two phylums. The first one phyla was known as the uh, Lamellibranchieta or the Bivalvia and the second one was the Cephalopod, the second was the uh, Gastropods and third was the Cephalopods. The three, the three classes of the invertebrate uh, Paleontology has been discussed and the most important point was also connected to the study of the principles of the stratigraphy. In the principles of the stratigraphy, I have been given the importance and the contribution of the other geologists, particularly the uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Steno. Nicholas Steno has given the important principles and he has laid the uh, order of superpositions, lateral continuity and horizontality, those things have been already discussed. Thank you.